So what are the potential shortcomings and problems of so-called CRUD-based applications? This is the way um, enterprise applications are typically built and CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. And the way it works is we have a state of some domain object. This state is normally in the database or in the uh, memory model respectively. And it looks like some object having some properties. And then if we want to change or create that object, we actually apply actions that involve mostly the whole object as once, as a whole. That means if we want to change the name or the, an order item of a customer, we normally provide the full new state of the customer to the application and say, please update this to that state. This is now the current status quo. And of course, there are some problems or potential problems um, combined with that. For example, if we want to at the same time change the name of a customer and change some potential order item in the orders, and these two requests come in simultaneously and hold two different versions of the new customer, then you have to lock and some state has to win. So you, per default, would optimistically lock the state in the database and then the last one loses and gets an exception. And only the first one wins and the second one has to repeat the request again. And that should raise the question whether it should be avoided to, um, to modify these two actions, to perform these two actions at once, or if it actually should be allowed because they should not affect each other in theory, right? And another, so this is a potential problem. If um, you want to scale up and you want to do these two things um, simultaneously. And another uh, uh, problem comes with the context and the history of your application. Because as I said, you only store in the current state of your objects. And that means you lose the context. Why is the um, system in the state so uh, in the current state as it is so uh, what was involved during all that time and of course the history so how it got to that state what were the um, atomic transactions that have been applied so that the current uh, system now looks as it is for example if we um, order a new item then the customer may add, add some items to the shopping cart and add another ones and remove them and at the end of the day finally submit and then you have the last valid state but you lose everything before and that could be quite interesting for your business uh, department for example what items have been added and have been removed in the meantime and why and so on and so forth and actually sometimes it's even uh, required by law that um, computer systems store the whole history and know actually why the system is in the current state. So you have the whole history of transactions available. So in some uh, places you may need that anyway. And then a CRUD based application may not the best choice for you. And having that said, so you lose the context and the history of your application and sometimes it's needed to do some more complex and uh, verification and validation steps. As you only have the current state of your system, so you have to make sure that everything is consistent before and after each and every update. And this actually is the point um, of the so-called ACID ACID transactions. So you're always going from one consistent state to the other one. And if you update the whole model at once, that may include some more verification and validation steps in between because there could be some potential change down there in some property and you would um, have to make sure that everything in the system is still consistent. And depending on the situations, this may clutter your code with a lot of uh, validation and verification steps. However, the much bigger problem with that is the scalability. Um, there is something um, around called CAP theory, consistency, availability, network partition tolerance, that in own words basically says you can either be consistent or you can um, scale your system. You cannot uh, fully um, apply them both at once. 
and normally you choose for scalability. That means you, um, if you potentially want to do make your application bigger and bigger and be able to serve more customers, then eventually at some point you have to just give up the consistency. But in most uh, cases, this is actually not a big deal. And having so the reason is, of course, if you have some state somewhere and this is the current state, then you have to have one single source of truth, which, which is normally one database. And if you have more than one instance of a database, if you still want to be consistent, you have to synchronize each and every update um, synchronously. So you would more or less have to lock everything down via the short period of the update and then release it again so you're still consistent at any given time. And that, of course, doesn't scale if you involve more and more systems and more and more transactions. And having that said, if you even involve several other external systems, then it's the same thing. If you want to be fully consistent, you would have to apply distributed transactions and wait for um, every other system to perform the updates and then go back and carry on and finally commit everything in an all or nothing fashion. But this does not scale. And the same is true um, that for most of the applications, the read side, so the reading highly outperforms the writing side. So you read far more often than you would write. And in a CRUD based system, you can scale that individually. So if you want to, uh, if you would apply more systems, then you apply both the read and the write side, which sometimes would not make sense if your reads, for example, highly outperform your writes, which is quite often the case. And yeah, having that said, these were some shortcomings and problems of CRUD based applications or of the way enterprise architectures as normal are normally built. Um, this doesn't mean you should totally avoid these architectures. I mean, they work for have been working for a long period of time, but you just have to make sure um, that you know about these problems. And when these uh, specifically the scalability issue become a real problem and when to tackle that. And in the next video, I will explain why actually the real world and real world usages are not consistent and in most of the cases are actually eventually consistent.